What's going on YouTube? JT is reborn here and welcome back to another edition of my DC comic book reviews. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Superman issue number four. And I can assure you that after reading this issue, that this is in fact better than Superman four, the quest for peace. So if you're wondering based on the four, I don't know, that's just a bad joke. But anyways, this one is of course written once again by Joshua Williamson. The art this time around is done by Jamal Campbell and Nick Dragota. And uh, it's continuing the adventures in chapter four of the whole situation with Parasite and these ruthless scientists and Superman working with Lex Luthor and Supercorp and all that stuff. Uh, it's another really good issue in this series. I mean, the artwork is spectacular. Jamal Campbell and uh, Nick Dragota work together on this one. And like I said in the first couple of issues, uh, it's a match made in heaven for Superman. It's just art style fits kind of the bright and beautifully like detailed and colorful landscape of metropolis metropolis if you will and the story is interesting we get into some interesting tidbits into lex luther's past which is objectively kind of funny too about how lex being the narcissist that he is viewed himself as the hero and his dynamic with superman we come to find out that back in the day when he first made it to Metropolis, of course, back when he had hair, uh, he was a scientist and he wanted to be seen as the hero of Metropolis through his genius. So his narcissism is at display. Uh, you can see the difference between him and Clark, of course, right here. And then a character also gets kidnapped and that is Silver Banshee. And there is a reveal at the end of this issue, which I gotta be honest, I never expected. So I'm gonna have to get into spoilers here when we get to this point. Um, but the reveal is so, like, surprising, but I actually kind of like it. Uh, so after Silver Banshee is kidnapped by the same people who turned Parasite, if you will, we also get some interesting tidbits about this Kryptonian Claw uh, thing, where Kryptonite, as we know, how it affects Superman, but what if, how would it affect other metahumans, if you will, when it's kind of manipulated and amplified in certain ways? So they do the same thing to Silver Banshee right here. She gets uh, kind of forced to work with them against her will something she doesn't really want to do because he's trying to like lived a normal reformed life with somebody and that's somebody as we come to find out later on in the issue after superman's put into a trap uh by the scientists to face off against silver banshee is none other than jimmy olsen that's right jimmy olsen is hooking up with silver banshee it's a nice little surprise, but I'm like, good for you, Jimmy. Like, I mean, I love Jimmy Olsen. Um, he, he fumbles the bag quite a bit, but, you know, him and Silver Banshee, it's something I wouldn't have expected, but I'm actually kind of rooting for uh, by the end of this issue. And I, like I said, I thought it was fun. I thought the stuff with Lex Luthor was quite good. There's also a funny scene where he's just kind of minding his own business in prison and he flicks a peanut at somebody who has a peanut allergy because the guy's just kind of annoying and... Uh, Superman's conversation with him after Lex is telling this whole story about how he was here. I was like, you're lying. You're full of crap. Because uh, Clark does not buy anything Lex does. Because Lex has double-crossed so many people over the years. Um, and he knows there's always some shady stuff when it involves Lex Luthor. So you know, that's what I always love about Lex Luthor is you never know what he's fully up to. And that's kind of the makings of early great villains. Sometimes he can be an anti-hero. He's just a fascinating character. And him and Superman just play so well off each other. And this issue's uh, showing a different different side of Lex. Well, maybe, maybe well, it, it's showing us stuff with, with Lex Luthor in his past where he was basically like a superhero in his own mind, if you will, which is stuff we've kind of seen before, but him and his whole little suit and that and back of the day with his long red hair, I thought that was kind of interesting. So, but like I said, this issue does some really good stuff and this, the reveal with Silver Banshee and Jimmy Olsen I thought was quite interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing where the story unfolds from here. I'm really liking Williamson's doing, loving the artwork. Uh, like I said, Jamal uh, Campbell in the first three issues was fantastic. And now you have Nick Dragota. Uh, their styles, I, I didn't notice any real difference in the styles at all. It just feel like it all was kind of seamless. So I got to give credit to the other artists too in the colors. Once again, uh, Jamal Campbell, you got Frank Martin on there as well. It's just, it, it's a beautiful looking comic book. Every issue of this current run of Superman has looked great. And so far, it's uh, it's been entertaining. No issue is missed so far. So Superman's been in good hands lately. So that's 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 something worth uh, talking about. So 
hopefully Williamson sticks around for a while if he can maintain this level of quality and keep up with a good Superman book, I'll, I'll, I'll be pretty happy. So anyways, uh, if any of you have any thoughts on the issue, what do you also think of the whole Jimmy Olsen and Silver Banshee thing? I thought that was a interesting surprise, but I, I'm surprisingly okay with it. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with more comic book reviews later on. Uh, I haven't gotten around to reading the other two that I'm going to cover this week. So look forward to those stuff. Hopefully those will be up tonight. And uh, I will see you all in the next video.